This is Deborah Atkinson, and you're listening to the Flipping 50 podcast, where I address your top questions and things you struggle with most so you can have more energy and less decision fatigue about what to eat, how to move, and you can change your thoughts to Flip 50 with the life and the energy you love in this second half. And today, by the way, this is a mindset shift for me. I'm re recording. Five mindset shifts for better fitness in menopause. Not always does technology work in my favor, and today was that day. So, lots learned, taken forward, and it's such a good lesson as I launch into this. Because mindset mindset shifts are a must if you're pursuing better fitness during menopause or after. You had socialization and conditioning that influenced you heavily at a time when, well, you were easily influenced. You potentially buried yourself then and now under the business of life. And my students and clients tell me all the time that they were busy in their careers and their families, not necessarily eating all that well, not finding time for exercise, and not necessarily feeling that they needed it, which whether you see it or not, it's a myth (laughs) because it's like medicine, preventative medicine, and it will sooner or later catch up with you. I say that because women sometimes equate the need for exercise with the need to lose weight or the need to get rid of calories or find ourselves more desirable. Really buying into exercise as a lifestyle, a health style, the kind of exercise very different from your 20s and your 30s that is about hormone balancing, not about burning calories or fat or basically burning you. A midlife woman under stress respond quite differently to more exercise, less food, that age-old mantra. In fact, she's likely to slow her metabolism to a crawl and threaten her energy with adrenal fatigue if she does that for very long. It's going to take some mindset shifts to rid yourself of those decades-old thoughts. I've got them right here in this post. First, though, before I dive in, I want to begin letting you know my podcast listeners know that the Flipping 50 Cafe is the sponsor of this podcast episode, and right now is the time to jump in before the rate goes up in July. The sooner you're in, the better your rate. Some of our founding members are in at the lowest rates that we'll ever see again, and they'll stay right there. They're grandfathered or grandmothered, is that a word, in because I so appreciate them. And here's why things are changing in the cafe and why right now is the time to get in. We've revamped the platform. We've listened to all of the feedback and we've curated from all the content that you have access to in the huge library but we've curated from that mini courses. So I've done the organization for you in eight areas that our members tell us are the hottest sources of frustration. For instance, weight loss, how to start exercise or how to start eating for right now, how to change your old thoughts, joint health, caring for osteoarthritis or orthopedic issues if your knee or a hip shoulder bothers you. Bone density, strength training, and there's already a new course that we're adding to the mix on and an extensive hormone intel course. So you know what hormones are pulling what strings so that you also know what tests might you want to do if the changes you're making lifestyle wise aren't helping as much as you'd like and or to help you commit and be more compliant with the changes you really do want to make by measuring them. And there'll be some intel in there about how to interpret your lab tests and why Western medicine labs potentially are not ideal. All of that, when we have juicy deep dives anywhere in our Flipping 50 community, 
the cafe members have constant access to it and it's organized for them. I'm going to share a sneak peek behind the scenes in the show notes for this episode. So you can actually look at a video as I go in behind the scenes and you'll see some of it. Obviously, I can't show you the details, the dozens of workout videos, the how-to library to modify exercises or do them correctly in the first place if you're just starting. I can't show you all of that stuff, just in fairness to our cafe members, but I'll show you a sneak peek of what you can get. So enough about the cafe. I could go on and on about that, but let's talk mindset shifts. Boy, I have a hard time saying that today. First of all, I want to talk about the status quo mindset. And I'm really, in each of these examples, giving you a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. And what you really want to cultivate is a growth mindset. And here's the good news. If you're catching yourself and you're more like the fixed mindset as I go through these, don't worry. It's not static. You can change it. And if you happen to be a parent, a a coach or a leader, you can influence others to become someone with a growth mindset as well. So catching yourself first, the piece of that you've got to know is what does it look like? So let's start with this. The status quo mindset says, you know, fixed mindset says I'm bad at that. And maybe you say, I'm good at that. But the growth mindset says, I don't know if I'm good or bad. I've never really put in much effort at it. But I do know women who didn't start running until they were 46 or doing triathlons until they were 60-something. Let's talk about the natural. You know, like you're a natural at that. You've heard that. you probably said it. I know I have. A fixed mindset says, I used to be good at that. I don't know what happened. A growth mindset says, I really just had a certain level of success naturally, and I never put any work into getting better. So I think it's time to try again. Let's talk about the perfect time, right? Aren't you waiting for the perfect time when you have the butler and the maid and you have so much time on your hands? (laughs) Keep, Keep waiting. Fixed mindset says, I don't have time to do this right now. It's too much to add to my plate. A growth mindset would say, I am busy for sure. And because of that, I need this more than ever. I'm going to reach down deep and find something else to give up or say no to. So I have time to take this step. The weight mindset. So maybe I should call this the weight loss mindset. The fixed mindset says, you know, if I don't lose weight, this will be another failure. Growth mindset says, no matter if I lose weight or not, I know learning the right way to do this will make me happier and healthier right now. An age-related mindset. Fixed mindset says, I'm getting older. It makes sense that I'm slowing down. I'm gaining a little weight don't have as much energy, a growth mindset will say, I don't have to be a victim of age unless I choose not to work out and eat smarter to compensate. And in this one, there is a book where I'm pulling all of this content about fixed and growth mindset. It's from the book Mindset, The New Psychology of success. It's by Carol S. Dweck, and um, that's D-W-E-C-K. If you haven't read it, and this is of interest to you, I'm giving you a great synopsis right now, but it would be a great read. It's very interesting. She does a really good job of writing it, telling stories, giving examples so that you can definitely relate somewhat like what I'm doing for you today and putting these into Some of the most common statements and topics around health and fitness and and reaching your ultimate goals. But let's talk about, you know, Michael Jordan was an athlete who, you know, did he have natural ability? I mean, if you haven't heard this story, you know, as a youth, he was rejected. He was told he 
you know, was average or not even average compared to his peers. So he wasn't, you know, a rock star as a youth, but he worked hard. He worked really hard. And typical of athletes, you know, when we say aging athletes, that usually means they tip the 30 something scale and they're older. And because we now have, you know, Olympians that are in their teens, you know, barely in their teens and in their 20s, that if you're an aging athlete, you know, you are at a disadvantage when you're working at that level because things do change. But for athletes like Michael Jordan, maybe like Tiger Woods, who's been such a great example recently, they worked harder to compensate for age. And, you know, it's very hard to maintain a high level of expectations when you've been there, you've been the epitome of what everybody compared themselves to, you know, the Michael Jordan's shoes, right? I mean, who among us has something like that named after us? You have to really be there. And it's hard to maintain that once you get to the top. Keeping at the top is much more difficult than getting there in the first place. But Michael Jordan stayed there for a long, long time. And then when he he'd left basketball and he decided he wanted to play baseball, he didn't just, you know, pick it up and casually do it thinking I'm an elite athlete, I'm so talented, I'm going to do really well. He went all in. And really, that's the mindset is, you know, if you don't go all in, how can you expect to get all the results? So, you know, I often, in especially in the 28-day kickstart, because it is 28 days, it's actually a little bit easier to commit and to commit to the first slightly less than three weeks of making some major changes in order to be able to really test what do you need going forward for hormone balance and how it starts in your gut. You know, if you can be 100% in, those women who have, have seen amazing results, but you've got to really commit that you're not just trying this, you're actually doing this. So have you noticed that, you know, those naturally talented people, maybe you remember from high school or college, who didn't necessarily work for it, they faded. Nobody hears about them or remembers them anymore. But then there's this, my client Jennifer, she hasn't gotten to the pinnacle of her own fitness destination yet, and I doubt she ever will because she keeps getting inspired to set new goals, new activities. But when she posts, she posts that she's played golf on a new golf course, or she posts that she's done another 5K, people love it. She isn't thin. You know, she isn't winning. She's not standing up on the podium collecting a medal necessarily, although in her age group, and she shows up in all kinds of inclement weather. She's picking up more of those. But she is out there. My friend Susan could not swim when she registered for her first Ironman triathlon. And that's a, that's a big triathlon. Swimming 2.4 miles in open water, usually a lake or the ocean is, you know, swimming is mandatory. Swimming well is good. She made it out of the water in that first triathlon with 30 seconds to spare after swimming from kayak to kayak, meaning you can swim to a kayak and hold on. You can't be helped moving forward or use it to propel you, but you can rest and you can use all the two hours and 40 minutes. That is a long time to be in the water. And she almost did. But once it's over, nobody looks back at time. You know, she's DNF'd. That means did not finish many times in triathlons because she panicked in the water. She's gotten tons of followers, however, on her social media posts. And she's a sponsored athlete in her 60s. She's 65, if not 66. And why? Because we like her spirit. We like fighters like Susan and Jennifer. We like persistence. Sometimes we like it better than poor winners. Do you remember Nancy Kerrigan's story? The tennis star John McEnroe or coach Bobby Knight. 
Those are memorable, right? But what kind of emotion do they evoke in you? Likely not as positive. They don't necessarily inspire you to say, if she can do it, I can do it. If they can do it, I can do it. And to get off the couch. I have a question. So I'd love to hear your response either below the show notes or below the social media posts where you see this episode. What kind of mindset do you have right now? And you might have a growth mindset in one area and a fixed mindset in another. I think that was my first question when I very first read this book, probably six years ago. And I picked it up again to review it. And I have the same thought. And the answer really is yes. I mean, you absolutely can. But you can also train yourself to go from fixed to growth mindset. You can see how empowering it would be. For children not to just get praised, you know, for, oh, you're so smart or, oh, you're so athletic, but to praise effort and ask them about how they feel about doing that, what they did in order to become better, how they worked at the the thing that they were good at. There's a difference between praise that's really productive and effective and that that is static and assumes that they just got lucky or they had good genes or they're a natural because naturals fade. Talent is overrated. It's a book you might want to pick up. Again, if you love this topic, that's a great book. It's all about the fact that talent or being a natural and having it come easy is only worth so much. And for those people who don't even have that level of natural ability or talent, if they have the desire, they can outwork talent every single day. Mindset's important to us. If you're flipping 50 right along with me, we've got lots of changes that have occurred in science in the last 20 or 30 years that really changed our old thoughts about exercise and eating right. But we've also got changing hormones. And the two of them together mean we have to make a lot of mindset shifts pretty much on the fly. So review this. Take a look at the book and look at your own mindset. Catch yourself in it. You'll be more aware of it right now. If you have a question or comment, leave it below the show link at flipping50.com forward slash mindset shifts. And there's a dash between those. And join us on the Flipping 50 TV Facebook page to get all the juicy resources and links mentioned in the show and look a little bit deeper at the cafe because part of mindset shift is surrounding yourself with people who are doing the thing you want to do or doing the same thing that you're doing. Visit today's episode again at flipping50.com forward slash mindset dash shifts. And if you enjoyed the show, I would love it if you'd leave me a rating in iTunes where you can be listening to this and have it come directly to your device so you can take me on your walk or your run or your hike or listen while you're weightlifting. And then share this with a friend to surround yourself with a supportive community of women on the same journey. What are you waiting for? Start flipping 50 today.